Um, so next, I am pleased to introduce Mr. Mark DeSilvio. Um, Mark is an, has been an educator for 10 years, and he currently works at McGuffey High School um, in Claysville, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour southwest of Pittsburgh. Mr. Silvio currently teaches AP European History, Honors World History, Psychology, and Economics. Um, today, he'll be discussing a unit that examines the migrant journey through the analysis of narratives and a variety of news sources. So, thank you very much for joining us. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, so I teach at McGuffey High School, which is in Claysville, Pennsylvania. A um, little bit about McGuffey. It is around 98% Caucasian, and it is primarily lower middle class rural. Uh, it's a farming community, and uh, therefore it's a lot more isolated than many of these uh, many other school districts are. In fact, uh, I believe we are, if not the largest, the second largest school district per square mileage. Uh, when you take into account, we graduate around 130 to 150 students uh, a class, and that is dropping. So that gives you a sort of sense of how large that community is and how spread out these students are from one another. Um, uh, like was mentioned, I teach uh, AP European History, and that was the unit uh, or the class, I should say, that I wanted to focus on. Those of us or anyone who has taught AP courses before know that the AP exams tend to fall in about the middle of May. The school district tends to end about the beginning of June, middle of June, so there's often a lot of time at the end of the school year uh, that needs to be filled with something contemporary, something that uh, the students can really sink their teeth into. And so I, I decided rather than focus on one uh, lesson, rather to, to look at a unit, uh, as, like was mentioned, sort of the migrant journey. Um, McGuffey, we have nine classes a day. They're 42 minute classes, which once again, those of us who know how that works, isn't exactly that much time. Um, but with about three weeks to a month at the end of the year, that's the way I saw this lesson really breaking down. Uh, I basically broke it into three parts. Uh, the first part being, why do people leave home, okay? Uh, what is the, why is it that people migrate? Why do they take this risk? Why, or if, whether it's uh, voluntarily or forced migration, what is the, the, the central idea or many ideas that come from that? Um, I like to open up every unit with a big brainstorm. Let's see what you know. Let's see what you what you are can bring to the table already. And it's one of those, what do the students know before we dive uh, headlong? The second uh, part of this is problems faced during migration. And Dr. Haggerty was mentioning a lot of these types of things, whether it's uh, you know just the dangers of the journey itself, the costs, uh, the, the aspects of dealing with smugglers and thieves and so on. Um, and bringing that home with how those migrants are treated once they arrive wherever it is that they decide to be their final destination, whether it's uh, you know in Greece or, or ultimately uh, Germany or one of those other countries. Within each one of those units, I have it broken up in several days, three to four days roughly, depending on how long it takes for us to discuss these various topics. I was looking at things like Syria, um, what is happening in Syria using BBC articles, um, so that, because that gives the students a sense of why so many people would be forced to leave there, the dangers they face via civil war, and that's very interesting. Uh, you're talking about um, the climate concerns and so on. That's something I hadn't even considered. So that's also something the students can really understand. Uh, taking this a step further, looking at migration policy from the Migration Policy Institute that takes, uh, that looks into perceptions of risk and so on and you know, leading a lot of discussions based on those concepts as well. And in an assignment at the beginning of this first part of the unit in which um, I asked the students to look into their own uh, family, familial migration journey. And if I can make the students uh, have a personal connection in any way, uh, being that the United States is founded almost entirely on, uh, on migration of uh, various types, um, to where, you know, where they or from where did their families come, why did they leave, what problems did they face, bring those back to the classroom. Once again, it facilitates discussion and it puts their, so the students more into the mindset of those that would take this risk. Uh, with regard to problems faced during migration, once again, brainstorming, what issues do you believe they might run into, um, looking at an article from The Economist, everything you wanted to know about migration across the Mediterranean, uh, having the students watch a 60 Minutes uh, documentary, Death in the Mediterranean, the nice thing about those types of things is I can post those online and so the students can watch them at home, come into school already, uh, ready to engage and, and to, to bring many questions of their own uh, to, to talk with their, their peers. 
Um, once again, looking at Migration Policy Institute and operational smuggling networks, uh, where they're headed and the, the many risks that these people face. Lastly, how are they treated once they arrive? Uh, what is the reaction by host countries? We can also at this point start to tie in uh, how people in the United States have been recently reacting to immigration. Uh, especially since it is an election uh, year and the political environment has brought it right to the forefront. Uh, Latin American uh, people making their way north and the issues they faced once they've arrived. Looking at uh, secondary resources once again, things, uh, article from the Atlantic, what effect will make migration have on European wages? Because that uh, directly impacts those, refu uh, those, well, I hate to say refugees, migrants, and those who live in the host country. Um, and uh, looking at uh, worldviews, maps, understanding where these, these people are, are going and, and how they're handling it once they arrive. A culminating project for the unit, so like I said, it's three weeks to a month, is a research uh, paper or presentation. The way I envisioned it, because it is an AP cl uh, class, each student would choose either a migrant group, past or present, uh, and a, a host group, um, past or present. And with the migrant group, who is this group? Why are they leaving home to where are they going? Uh, what has been the outcome and how does this impact future generations, whether it's uh, people who migrated many years ago or, or currently uh, on their way? As far as the host group, once again, same type of thing. Who is this group? What has been their uh, reaction to uh, migration and immigration? Um, and essentially, how have they dealt with this large influx of people? Uh, have they welcomed them in, like we're seeing with many, uh, like we're seeing in Germany, or are they being shuffled along very, very quickly? Um, this type of unit, uh, this type of lesson unit can be modified. I haven't had the chance to use it because, like I said, it's uh, something I was hoping to use at the end of this school year. But with world history classes, uh, which are sophomores, they, it is an honors class, but they are sophomores, so you could use. Um, less uh, sources or to, to water them down a little bit, um, especially with questioning. Um, can also tie in, like I said, to U.S. immigration and migration issues historically uh, and so on. So that's what I was hoping to accomplish. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Mark. Sure. Um, I'd like to open it up to questions as well regarding, regarding Mark's unit. Um, if anybody would like to again share on the chat feature. Um, but Mark, I guess I, I have a question to start sure. off. Um, so you were talking about kind of having the students in the very beginning share their migration story mm -hmm. um, or their family's migration story. Um, so in my previous work um, as a teacher, I taught in a school that was predominantly African American. Mm -hmm. um, and many students don't necessarily know their ancestry. Um, so how would you perhaps adapt that for a school that, you know, maybe a large majority of the students don't necessarily know where their, their families came from or, or how they or how they migrated to where they currently live? Sure. Well, with um, specifically African American populations, there are a lot of slave narratives that can that can be accessed. There has been a lot of research done on groups who have been forcibly uh, brought to the United States, if that's specifically one of those. Uh, of this group. So there's there's a lot of information out there uh, and it's accessible uh, connection. I guess mine's a comment to add to that. Have you considered using literature in the classroom? Because sometimes personal fiction stories help students to relate because there's a great book called Hopes and Other Dangerous Pursuits and it takes place about migrants going from Morocco into Spain and they're on a boat and it explains all of their stories in kind of um, a retrospective and then in current. So that might be a way to answer kind of Kathy's thing, because sometimes if a student doesn't know their no own history, reading this piece of fiction, though, and getting really involved in their lives might help to at least understand why people make that journey across the Mediterranean. No, absolutely. That's, uh, that sounds like that would be really easy to bring in, especially for those students who, um, you know, who enjoy literature in and of itself as well. So. And it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a great balance. I would also wonder how, and I love the idea of showing the uh, 60 Minutes clips and some of the videos that have been put together, in some cases for some emotional uh, 
reasons and showing some graphic imagery how how graphic would you get with some of those images well you know once again that would depend on the, the level of, of student uh, with seniors with AP I, I generally try not to hold back too much um, most of them are around 18 years old and uh, you know in order for this to really hit home uh, I, I try not I would try not to uh, with younger students with my sophomores who maybe aren't mature enough to handle that sort of thing, obviously I would have to take a more hands-on approach. And then just a general question, what background knowledge do you expect your students to already understand going into this unit? Um, so for an AP European history, they obviously, you know, they've had- the Sure, yeah, year. we spent an entire year starting from uh, ancient Greece and Rome and bringing our, uh, all the way up to pretty much uh, modern day. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of that. Um, a lot of these students already are getting exposed to things in world history courses or in US history courses. So once again, that has a lot to do with those brainstorming sessions at the beginning of each minor part, because I'm trying to find out specifically how far how far back we need to go or how much we need to hit before we move forward. Because I would I you know, in my experience, I would even find that you know, defining refugee versus migrant would even be very challenging. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not for an AP European history class, but but for sure. perhaps a 10th grade world history class, that would probably be something important. Sure, I mean, we could, yeah, even starting with just basic uh, language, or identifying basic terminology, how it's, how it's viewed, how it's used, and so on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 